It's Natalie to throw first for the bullseye. Outside the ball. Outside the ball. First lock, it's Natalie to throw first. Game on. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and it is finals time here at the 2022 WDF World Open. Ladies first, of course, and Natalie Gilbert will take on Eileen de Graaf. A change in the commentary box as well. As you can see, Marco Meyer is back to the day job. He's refereeing, and the man who has been travelling the venue all day, liaising with players, doing some media work, has now the chance to sit down for a wee while and talk about the darts, Mr Nick Rolls. Hello, Anthony. Have Hello. you had a good day? I certainly have. I've enjoyed some tremendous matches on the stage today. Brilliant. I, I've only come in what for the finals, you realise that? Yes, exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it has. It's been a great day. I've been around uh, chatting to different people from all around the world just about their experience today and, uh, and over the weekend. So, yeah, it's been great fun. Great fun. Looking forward to this as well. 66. I had I, I I actually did some marking as well because I marked Natalie's final on the on the Dark Connect system. And oh. Just now against uh, Aletta. Good game. Good game. Thank you, Bruce. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Bruce is Bruce Forsyth, old English comedian, stroke game show host. One hundred. I leave you require one hundred and sixty-one. Yes. <laughs> one six one then for. Eileen back here on the present day. 59. Yeah, no need for Eileen to go for the the uh, finish as Natalie's back on 227. But Natalie in her semi-final found a really a couple of really big scores around this mark in the game. The 220, Eileen 250 mark and hit 140 on a number of occasions which turned get legs around. So, yep, tops it is then for Eileen de Graff. And there's yeah, the first leg on a 102 up. finish, a 15 finish. dart leg. To start the final. Really, really good. And that was obviously against the darts as well. So, Game on. we'll have a look at the the ladies' run to the final. We'll start mm. with Natalie. Started with a four 0 win over Marina Calibo of Belgium, Anna Forsmark was next four one. Aya Jalbert in the last thirty two four two. Defeated Kasumi Sato four three in the last sixteen. Veronica Simonson in the quarterfinals, and then. As Nick pointed out, Aletta Vier mm. in the fight 16. in the semi final. It's a good run. I mean, Anna Forsmark, Rasid, Aya J J Jalbert, uh, across from America, has just turned 18 and is playing really well in the ladies. Kasumi Sato, well known in the Japanese world of darts. And Veronica Simonson has been doing well this season. So, not an easy run. Some good victories there for, for Natalie. Certainly has been. 100. Of course, we've had a look at Natalie, so we also have a look at Eileen's run to the final. Oh, I'm playing really nicely here. 100. I'll let you pronounce who she lost, she, who she beat in the first round. <laughs> ah. Leniak Kabistant, I think, is that, do you think? It's something similar. Leniak Kabistant. We, we sincerely, or I sincerely apologise if that's incorrect. It was a 4-0 victory for Eileen over the, the, the French lady. Then Monty Boronat was next from 90. Catalonia, 4 0 there. Liz Tynan of America fell victim 4 2 in the last 32. Kim Palstra in the last 16, 4 0. Kirsty Hutchinson in the quarters, 4 1. And Stephanie Renock in the semi finals, 4 2. With an 83 average in that semi final. Yeah, Eileen well, producing so. her best average of the day. Here we go, double 18 then for a 109. 73. So after a 102 in the first leg, she's she's in command here. She's on uh, her own throw here. Having lost the bullseye, she did need to beat, uh, break the Natalie Gilbert serve, which she did in the very first leg. So Natalie just not finding it at the moment. 30. I need you to cry 36. Double nine now. She's just having a look at her opponent's score. Good thinking, 20. Eileen. Good thinking. Had a look, saw Natalie was on 210. What's better, double eight or, God forbid, split the nines? So she's taken the safe option or safer option. No guarantee she hits the double eight. 43. Eileen, you require 16. But she'll be more comfortable coming up than she would be for either double nine or nine. Good grief. 
Can't get much closer than that. Yeah. Oh, Natalie Unicorn pulled that one. Mm. A lot of shoulder in that throw. Natalie Gilbert, 167 shots on. Treble 19. <laughs> Bullseye. <laughs> that would have been a roof razor right there. I don't think Natalie. I think she would have been forgiven had she hit that if she had done a lap of the stage. Her name's now had nine darts at doubles, eh? And she's paid the price for it as well. Indeed. Having broken the Natalie Gilbert serve, to have nine Third darts at doubles there. Bit of a sin. You, even now, you can just imagine there's the blood is boiling in the Eileen de Graaf body. <laughs> Definitely. Should have been for all intents and purposes 2 0 to the Dutch lady, but mm. Natalie Gilbert stuck to her task, took the opportunity she was given. 60. And we have parity once more at one apiece. First to five in this final. Yeah, the men's final to follow, which is again best of nine. Benjamin Pratnamar, the Slovakian, against Kai Fan Leung of Hong Kong. Most certainly is a world open, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Four of our four finalists. An English lady, a Dutch lady, a man from Hong Kong, and a man from Slovakia. Wonderful. 16. This is not the last we'll see of Natalie Gilbert. Of course, she'll be back on stage tomorrow for the semi-finals of the Windmill World Masters. Talking of the Windmill World Masters, how good were the two or the four semi-finals in the youth as well? The Paige Pauling, I think, averaged 76, if I'm not mistaken. She did. Oh, marvellous. And uh, she plays the young lady from Finland. I think in the in the final. Yep, Lida Lanko. Yes, Lida Lanko. And 72 was Paige's average, but... 72, my five. apologies. Still but absolutely magnificent. Yeah. Of course, a great effort. And then the boys, that's that's going to be an absolute thriller with uh, PJ Stewart, or PJ Stewart Jr., I should have called him. Well, he had a 76 average, and Luke Littler had a 78 average, so evenly matched if you base it on just that one stat, which is obviously not fair, but... Uh, Neither, both of them have got plenty of confidence, so that's going to be a really interesting game. It's the WDF world number one against the WDF world number three. Mm -hmm. 56 for Eileen. Tops it is then for a 2 1 lead. And oh another yes. break of throw. So 102, no problem. 76, no problem. Nine darts at, well, I don't know, 36. Pff, can't do that. <laughs> Crazy game, right? Yeah, this is nuts. There's some fabulous games in the boys. Just looking down the average, Luke had a 90 average against Andras Borbeli of Hungary. 60. 87 for Bradley van der Velden. I, I couldn't help but comment on the on the two lads that played in the uh, semi-final there, Va Bradley van der Velden and Peter 60. Stewart Jr. Mm. Fabulous beards. Yes, from, absolutely. From two lads under the age of 18. In fact, Bradley's only 14. <laughs> uh, crazy. 92. Crazy. I did speak a little bit about the boy that Luke played in the semi final, Matthias Rajon. Mm -hmm. I had the. Well, we're about to watch Natalie oh, Gilbert hit a maximum. Marco Meyer gives it the beans on the microphone. Yeah, the mic's open to the to the auditorium now what as well, so the people in the room. We've kept it down to that it's just so that we can hear it for the stream during the, the two days, but uh, these are the only games going on now, so we can play the play that out. Yes. So Marco's given it plenty, as you just said. Absolutely. Sorry, you were saying about uh, you were saying about Matthias. Yes, I had the pleasure of playing against him in the first round of the Czech Open last year. Ah. I, I was lucky to get nil. Ah. Excellent little player. You were lucky to get nil. Yes. Fantastic. Did they actually call your name for Anthony you require at any point? No. Ah. Probably not. <laughs> then you were lucky to get nil. Oh, painful blow off the back of Ireland's 139 as well. This leg's turned around. 110 then, treble 18. Oh, treble 19 now. That's a great dart to leave 32. So we've had some 135 attempts on the stream. 25 all ball. Two doesn't help.
42, Aline Gidikaya, 32. 32 then for Aileen de Graff for a two-leg lead. Yeah, that's Kim Shaw, number four. I'm she says. Familiar Aileen de Graff cry. Absolutely, yes, it's become... Synonymous. Synonymous, yes. <laughs> yes, I like it. Say it, but don't spell it. <laughs> Puss or something, isn't it? 54. So Natalie finds herself two legs behind. She ne really needs to hold her throw here. And Eileen thinking, if I can get one more break here, I'm, I'm nearly there. Nearly there. On the hill. Indeed. In the phrase. 58. Yeah, tomorrow's action, we have the Youth 86. World Championship qualifiers tomorrow. Very exciting for the youth players to be playing. I forgot all about that. I was talking oh. to Paul Engelbert, I think, about five minutes before this started. I asked him, what time does this start as a maximum comes One in? Or asked him, what time does we start tomorrow? He said, well, the youth start at 11. I was like, the youths, are they playing again? Sure enough, yes. 100. The World Championship qualifiers. We will see which four youth players will make their way. Six. Six, four boys, two girls. Oh, yes, I forgot. It's semi finals for the boys. Mm. 85. Yep, six youth players off to the lakeside. 66. And then the stage action for the Windmill World Masters begins at two. We have the four men's quarterfinals, then the two ladies' semi finals, the two men's semi finals, and then our girls, 26. boys, women's, and men's finals. All the action starts at 2 p.m. Thanks again to Wimmel for their fabulous sponsorship of this tournament, the Wimmel World Masters, that is. And uh, of course, it will be available on all of our YouTube channels. YouTube channels, that's better. Hmm. We've got to say a massive thank you to yourself as well, Nick, and the rest of the WDF for with the assistance of the NDB managing to get the, the Win World Masters back on the calendar and indeed hosting this wonderful World Open 65. tournament as well. Yep. Oh, the, the effort has been clearly worth it. The players, we've been speaking to a lot, but let's see Natalie go for tops. Double 10 then for a 3-2 game and she's come inside. Nine for double eight for Eileen. There's the big nine right in the middle as well. Yeah, Great darts, right in the darts. Really cleared that up nicely for Eileen. Six legs, Eileen, the first first. Came on. Yeah, the, the hard work of putting it in together. And yes, you're, you're absolutely right, Anthony. So massive thank you to the NDB. They've been absolutely fabulous to set up. And our friends at Darknet. David and Arno. I know Arno doesn't do a great deal, as David <laughs> tells me all the time, but uh, yeah, great stuff. And um, it's been brilliant. Uh, everybody's really enjoyed themselves and it's been some great darts. They've met some old faces that they haven't seen for a while, but also met some new friends. And the, the, to be fair, the comradeship between all players from all over the world has been fantastic. Couldn't agree more. And just the two more days to go. <laughs> yeah, we have the youth qualifiers tomorrow for the Lakeside and on Monday. It's the big one. Qualifiers for the men's and ladies Lakeside World Championship. Yeah, a couple of interesting decisions today. Makuru Suzuki was not feeling too well this morning and decided not to play today when she was actually just a few points outside from qualifying for Lakeside. Mm. But... She decided that she wasn't going to play today, save herself for Monday. So there's obviously two ways of looking at that, but the, the, I guess the, the fact that the, the players that have already qualified for Lakeside Perfect. won't play in the qualifiers, so mm. theoretically, Makuru perhaps is looking at where the standard won't be quite as high, maybe that's her thinking. And it, of course, if she's not feeling well today, then she has to do what's right for her. Right? Oh, yes, absolutely. And Eileen is... Uh, Making light work of this sixth leg. 99. A much needed 99 for Natalie. There's one. Another treble 20. 80. That's an excellent last start. 
15 darts on double 12 with her opponent way back on 295. And it's looking like, albeit, oh, oh wow. 92. Oh. oh, it's touching. It must have been. Unicorn, 24. Double 12 then for the match, for the title. I'm going to let Marco give it the beans if it goes in. It's going to have to wait. 12. We did a closer look, but yes, it is in the single 12 segment. It sounds a really daft thing to say that double 12 is difficult to see, but for a referee, it's one of the more difficult ones to see. Mm. I always find that. And double 10, 16. obviously, for me. I mean, <laughs> 12. Here we go. Well, neighbour of double 10 is double 6, and that's exactly what Eileen de Graff has. And first up, it's there. A shrug of the shoulders, and Eileen de Graff, five legs to one in the final. And she is the 2022 WDF World Open Champion, an average of 82.68 to Natalie Gilbert, 70.18. Excellent performance. And Eileen de Graff wins the WDF World Open. Stick around, we'll be back shortly with our next match and final match of the day. It's the men's final. Benjamin Prattnimer takes on Kai Fanlung. <laughs>